One of the biggest persecutors of people today are communists. And then I get to find out that these communists are also in league with a beast. In fact, everybody's in league with it. Right? All of these nations, all of these leaders, all of them. All of them. So as I was watching this African movie one time and the man said, I can make you to be governor, I can make you to be this, I can make you to be that. And this is what happens. So some of you look at these people and you think they look so powerful when they're doing what, but they're under orders. Somebody's telling them what to do and what they cannot do. Okay? And sometimes they have to do things that they know clearly they are wrong. But it's either they do it or they be taken out of this life. And unless God does something, then these things go too. But God is still in control of this world. Okay? Because if we're left up to Satan, all of us will be dead. Okay? There will be not a soul left here. Jesus said, except those days should be shortened, no flesh should be saved. Because we go back to the sixth angel, we go back to that same chapter there in chapter Chapter 9, it's about six angel and the seven, the sixth trumpet, trumpet, right? It said that those evil angels were prepared for a day, a month, and a year. See here? It says, um, verse 15, and the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. So I'm saying to you, you can just act and act silly. These people in the demonic world, they know what o'clock it is. The Bible said, down to the very hour. So they were preparing for it. They are preparing for it. To destroy mankind upon the earth. And it's going to be so bad that Jesus said, except those days should be shortened, then no flesh should be saved. But he said for the elect's sake, the days were shot. Right? God had done it in the beginning because when the man would act like he's smart, like, you know, like when so many times they try to kill me, and God is telling me that he already set up everything because he knows what the intention is. Okay? And so this is one of the things that sometimes you don't understand about the gospel because the Bible said they had power, right? Could call on fire, smite them with plagues, I think. Yet still some of them were, were killed. Even some of them, right, like Peter, right, was crucified, right? The Bible tells you about Stephen was stoned. The Bible tells you about, um, about um, James was executed, right? So many of these children of God. But somebody might say, well, is it, do you think God deserted them? No, because the Lord himself walked that same road. Right? And he told him, he said, Pharaoh, they come and tell him that, Herod, get you out quick. Herod, come and kill you. And the Lord said, Herod, he said, go and tell that fox. Today, I do clear today and tomorrow and the third day I'll be perfected. He said, three days, I'll be right here. Tell him my address. See if he has the nerve to come down here. He didn't come. He, wouldn't, he couldn't come, right? Right? It couldn't come. But when the time came for him to be crucified, then he said, okay, my time has come now to go, and this is the way how it has to be. When Peter drew the sword, and Peter said, what? And he said, all right, take the ear and put it back on the man's hand, and heal it, you know. Right? Would you do something like that, man? He said, heal the ear, you know. And he said to Peter, he said, put, put up a sword. He said, I have a cup. I'm going to just drink it. I have to do it, right? For your sake, for your salvation, I'm going to do it. The sword, don't bother with the sword, right? And I guess Peter must have said, but what is the Lord doing? After I cut off the man's ear, I mean, I should have chopped off his head. And you take up the ear and put it back on, on him and heal him? I don't, 
I don't understand what's going on here tonight. I just said, what? What's going on? Larry, do you see that man come to kill you? And this is what you're doing? <laughs> so anyway, this is the power of God. Right? It's the power of God. And in this world, sweet as honey in your mouth, make you better bitter. But the day is coming when the mystery of God will forfeit, finish, and there will be no more bitterness. Right? And you know, I want to speak some more about this, by the grace of God, if God will give us this opportunity again, so we can talk about it. Because I said we talked about joy, eternal joy, because you get back to that about the bitter. Right? About the bitter in the belly. We talk about it. But let's finish this up here now. And said their dead bodies shall be right. And the scripture said, and they of the people, kindred and tongues and, and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell on the earth shall rejoice and over them and make merry and send gifts one to another because those two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. They don't want to hear the word of God. It was a torment to them. And don't ask if they never had fun. They had fun over it. They had fun over it. Where they had um, the, um, what's, what's this term they use? They used to have put them into the, um, who does that word? The slipping man. But you know what I'm talking about. They used to put them in, 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 the, um, in the arenas, right? And the people go and watch them being torn of lions and, you know, or whatever, you know, killed um, and torn. And to them that was fun. Right? So when you hear about these things happening in America, we are about lynching and all these things, and people go and they gather to watch it for fun. You hear those things used to happen in the Tower of London, I think it was, where they used to do executions. And people gather there. That was no fun. What, what was this all about? All of these terrible things which were happening to people. I mean, maybe, I don't know if some of these people at the Tower of London were criminals or what, but if the king didn't like you or whatever, they had you executed. You could be his brother, his mother, couldn't care less. I don't think anything about power that these people are so intimidated that, and this is one of the things that, you know, Solomon, he started out his kingdom very, very wrong by killing his brother. You understand? I know if David was alive, his father, he would maybe take him out of the throne instantly. He said, are you out of your mind? Did you see how my son, your brother, against, strength by against me? Did you see me kill him? So there you go and kill your brother. For what? And he's not even taking the throne from you. What are you doing? Right? But these, are these things I think they get from the Gentiles, which they saw in other countries. Right? Very intimidated when it comes to power. Right? You bring it in the spirit of murder. The spirit of the devil. And the Bible said after three days and a half. And the same thing is talking about. The, the time, times and a half. The same thing is talking about in a figure. But now we call it three days. Because a day in prophecy is a year. Right? It says in Ezekiel. And it says here, the spirit of life of God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them all. Okay? So all these things are speaking in figures. That's like Elijah who was taken up to heaven. I believe it relates to things like that. But it's, it's talking about a revival in the church. And it's also pointing to the second coming of Christ. But the scripture said, He heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. Right? And, 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 and that would be the kind of thing that is going to happen when the Lord shall come in glory. Because all the children of God will be gathered to meet him in the air. And that is it's clearly in in First Thessalonians chapter four. Those who are in the graves, plus those who are alive, we caught up to meet him here. Right? And the enemy, definitely, the people who are not saved, they will behold. But the scripture said, he said, I heard 
a great voice from heaven saying, oh, no, no. At the same hour there was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. And he said the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And the seven angels sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of his of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And that's it. That's it. So when the same angel gives his sound, the Bible said the mystery, all things is finished. Everything is finished. There is nothing more. Because children of God will see their end, and children of the devil will see their end. They will see their condemnation. Children of God will see their, their, their salvation. Children of the devil will see their condemnation. And it will be fixed. Right? It will be fixed. So many things that they are despised and they acted like it never existed. Right? They will see it happen right before their eyes and you can't do anything about it because it's just too late. And it's said the Bible talk about and He said, the angel said, remember, he said, whoa, 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 because of what was going to happen afterward. Because the angel saw the destruction. I said, they're not seeing things on a day by day basis. They're seeing things thousands of years ahead. Right? And so when these devils come down to the earth here, they know a whole lot of stuff that is a, what is to happen. Okay? And so when it comes to the end, when they know that the seventh angel is going to sound his trumpet, they are getting more terrified and scared than anything else. Because they know that's it for them. Okay? They have been having their field day. Okay? Having their field day. And as I tell you, they are telling these people, Right? They're leaders, whether they be in churches or political. That's another thing I was saying again. You know, I'm saying, you know, even the churches today, they have a name and it, it has nothing spiritual about it. You know, you know, the faith church or the, um, the family church. What is that? You know, what, what is that? You know, you know, I'm saying. You know, I saw one of these churches one time, I went there one time for a fun, for an event. And I, I see the pastor come out there and say, see the pastor. They ask him to pray. He has no anointing, no nothing whatsoever. He's empty as, as nothing. Even when he prays, I can see he's almost scared to pray. When they ask him to pray. Where are they attached to? They're not attached to God. So they build an empire. When you walk through the church, you think you're going to maybe the, Met, the Metropolitan Museum of Art or something like that. How big this thing is, right? What is it? It's nothing, right? So I'm telling you. And the scripture said the, the angel, uh, I'm telling you, but they, they, many of these people, they know what is go, are going to happen. But they can't tell you and they're not going to tell you. They have to keep on playing the game, playing out the cards, playing them out, playing them out, playing them out, right? Play out the game, right? You want outfield, you want this part, you want this one, play up the game as the devil tells them. Play the game out, right? And at the end of the day, you're going to win and you're going to lose. But you already know you're going to win and you already know you're going to lose. And the people who are watching it don't know. Right? They don't know. So they put, spend their money thinking that that one's going to win and they lose. And vice versa. But they know the whole game. Right? They know the whole thing, as I'm telling you about. So the angel was crying out, whoa, 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 when he saw what was going to happen, right? What was going to happen to the inhabitants of the earth, right? From the day the devil came down, the angel was crying, whoa, whoa, right? Whoa to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has come down, having great wrath, because he knows of a short time, right? In that Revelation 12, verse 12. Woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth or this, and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. It's right here. So you know we have a short time. The devil knows Lucifer, which causes them to know what a cock it is. So he says, they know it's not going to continue forever. They know we have a short time. 
But God don't tell you the day nor the hour. Right? But they know they're preparing for time to destroy men upon the earth. But God's plagues are coming. Right? Now the scripture said, there was an end to this now when the seven angels sounded. Right? There was an earthquake. And you see this thing come up again. Right? It comes up um, in chapter 6 about, at the end it said, there was a, 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 an earthquake. It said there was an earthquake so mighty. Uh, what is it? It said, and the kings of the earth and of the and the heaven departed, the scroll has rolled together. Every mountain island was moved out of their places. Uh, there's a scripture that said there was such a mighty earthquake. Anyway, let me get back to this. Scripture said here. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God and their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power, and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that thou they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy, thy, thy name, small and great, and should have destroyed them who destroy the earth. Amen. So the, the, the people of God were rejoicing, because now it won't be honey in their mouths, but honey in their stomach, sweet in their mouth. It was sweetness all right through when the, when the Lord shall come. When the seventh trumpet, the trumpet of the Lord shall come, shall sound. And the, seven, and the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there were seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings, and an earthquake and great hail. All right, so this is the end of it, talking about the seventh trumpet. All right, so the seventh trumpet brings us to the end of this world, the end of time. Okay, the Bible said when the angel shall begin to sound, the mystery, all of these things, no more mystery, right? You will be either in the side with the angels of God, or you will be on the side of the devil. May I just read that scripture again? Um, like First Thessalonians chapter 4 it says, But the Lord himself, verse 16, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. Hallelujah. I'm talking about voices. And the, and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall be rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. And as I said before, Paul said in Revelation in, in 1 Thessalonians 13, he said, and Now we see through a glass darkly. So even though I talk about these things and I understand a lot of what is being said here, but there are still many more things I don't understand, right? And the more I read it, the more I study, the more I understand. But even then, there's a lot more to understand, okay? There's so much more to understand. The children of God, there's so much more to understand, so much more. For we, now we see to a glass, darkly, but then, at that time, it will be face to face. Everything will become real, right? And I know that if you have relatives who have died, who serve God, you will get to see them again by faith. And um, more, you will get to see Moses and Abraham and, and um, you know, you see David and all these prophets. Elijah, of course, who was privileged to go into heaven in chariots and fire and horses of fire and Enoch and was translated that he should not see death. Okay, and I mean, you know, I don't know, you know, so Enoch is be, um, uh, by, by, by maybe about, about 6,000 some years old now, I mean, right? So, you know, figure Enoch and Elijah would be the oldest men, but we know that Elijah was translated, <coughs> translated, okay, because if he was in his fleshy body, 
he could not go into a chariot with fire. <laughs> I asked him, yeah, the Then he would be burned up. My God. And I remember when we did that, when we did this whole series until the Lord sent rain, the whole series of Elijah. Now when the chariot came down, although he was walking with Elisha, the chariot didn't take Elisha. Right? And the chariot, I tell you, I tell you God is, is, is amazing. The chariot didn't take Elisha either. They're walking together. The chariot knew which one it came for. And it just took up